All right, so I am now currently obsessed with my aquaponic system out in the greenhouse. It's a pretty standard NFT system. We're using two inch net cups down channels that are basically made from the gutter downspouts that have holes drilled in them. So it's a pretty good system. It's a system I've used in the past with aquaponics and hydroponics, and it's a, it's a good way to do it. Like I feel that NFT is one of the cleanest, simplest ways to grow hydroponically or aquaponically. It's just the best setup because you don't have to deal with the messiness that comes with large amounts of substrate, like the t traditional media filled beds. So that's part of the reason I like it because I can't, I don't like working with media filled beds. I've done it in the past and I've had success with them, but they're really, really, what I don't like about them is the cost of buying all that substrate. They usually have to be bigger systems to hold all the substrate. And even if you have a good pre-filter, solids build up in media filled beds, which means you have to clean them out regularly which is disgusting and awful. Because if you don't clean them out regularly, actually like that muck can build up. It can create anaerobic environment in the media bed. So the reason why that's such a problem is because in those dead spots, that anaerobic activity that can develop can actually go counterclockwise in terms of the nitrification cycle in your aquaponic system and be counterproductive to what you're trying to do, potentially harming your fish or at the very least losing nitrogen to the atmosphere. So in general, just I just find media beds just a pain to build, to fill, to maintain. So that's why I like NFT so much because you basically don't use any substrate whatsoever. So the big problem with NFT, however, is that there is no, it's just not good for certain kinds of vegetables. So you can do leafy greens. You can even do fruiting plants like tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers. Those all work pretty well in NFT. But when you get into grains and roots, especially the roots, root crops do not work in NFT like at all. Um, it's really, really difficult. I've seen some people kind of experiment with it, but it generally speaking just doesn't really work out. One, because you're usually using net cups and the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the root crop doesn't really have much place to grow. So I've kind of experimented with growing carrots and growing beets and growing radishes and net cups. And usually they grow, they push against the net cup, they destroy your net cup or get stuck. And it's usually just a mess. You don't get nice vegetables and it's just, while they technically grow, it's just not a good system for them. Now I'm experimenting with a lot of potential solutions for this. Now one of them is instead of using net cups, I'm gonna be experimenting in the future. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. I'm gonna be experimenting with, with using pool noodles as like a little collar to hold plants in place so there's no net cup they're sitting in so the plant can grow down and potentially say like a carrot could grow there in the channel itself. And I'll explain more of this in future videos. This is mostly an introduction video. So that might work, but again, maybe there's something even better. So I've been racking my brain trying to figure out, well, how can I do this? How can I incorporate root crops into my system. And I've come up with a few different solutions that I've, I've posted images of in my, if you follow my non-video posts here, you've probably seen some of them, or you follow me on Instagram, follow me on my Facebook page. That's where I put a lot of this stuff. And I've produced these pretty detailed diagrams trying to explain kind of my ideas and these few different ideas. The great thing about NFT is it has limitless scalability. So you can make a channel as long as you want. You can connect channels together and just go crazy and create a really, really huge system very, very easily with very, very little building involved. That's a big, big plus. The reason why I'm trying to find ways to incorporate this, these other kinds of growing into a system that's already kind of set up like an NFT. Like the system I have out in the greenhouse, I have the, I have the fish tank. It pumps water up to a mechanical filter and then the nutrient water goes down these channels back into the fish tank. You don't get much simpler than that when it comes to an aquaponics system. So I want to want solutions that kind of work with in that system. So there's a few different things. So one I considered instead of having those closed channels with the holes drilled in them, have an open channel and just filling the open channel with a substrate. For example, like expanded clay pebbles, which is pretty standard for media beds. So there would be these huge media beds. They would be long channels. So it kind of fits in with the whole gutter, long gutter setup of the NFT. But you have these open channels and then you can put seeds and basically treat them like shallow media filled beds. But I think it would have less issues because it wouldn't be flood and drain. It would just be NFT essentially and still just be a little stream of water that goes underneath the pebbles. So that might be a possibility and, and it would also be nice too because it would provide more room for bacteria to thrive. So the downsides of that is that you're still dealing with a whole lot of substrate. You're still dealing with a whole lot of media 
And it might potentially have those issues that that media field beds have in terms of dead spots. I'm not sure how that would work out, but it's possible. So that's a concern. So I, I would like to try that. So that is number one, something that I need to prototype and experiment with. So number two and three are, are kind of wicking solutions that I've come up with that I've been thinking a lot about, and I think they might work. The first would be to take one and a half inch PVC pipe the outer diameter of this is just a smidge below two inches, which means they fit perfectly in the already existing holes I have for my NFT setup. And they wouldn't necessarily be this long because this is over a foot, but you, let's say four inches to six inches. So it'll stick a little bit out of the channel. And then I fill up this tube with substrate, and then I plant a seedling of, let's say a radish in the top. Now the bottom of this would be sitting in the bottom of the channel, and the substrate, for example, coconut coir, something, something very absorbent, would suck, would wick the water up. Because remember, there's a little stream of water at the bottom of the channel. It will wick the water up to the plant. And as a plant grows, it, its roots can also grow down to access the water. And the cool thing about the gutters that I use is that the bottom channel is actually has little, um, little grooves in it. So while this would be sitting flush against the bottom of the channel, there would still be little spaces for roots to escape and get to water. So the roots could expand beyond the tube. The tube is basically just meant to hold in the substrate and give some kind of material for the water to wick up and for the plant to grow into. So this might work for root crops, but it's still very limited. Like this would be the biggest, ideally I probably wouldn't use a schedule 40 pipe, I'd use a thinner wall pipe so I can save some room there. But again, this is a pretty limited space for anything to grow. And that's big enough for a standard carrot, for a lot of different kinds of radishes. Probably not for a beet, though. So maybe this isn't ideal, and it definitely limits me in terms of what I could grow in it. And, and plants might not be happy in it at all. So the other option is to forget about the NFT channels. Forget about the NFT channels that are closed and that I've drilled holes into for the net cups. Going back to the open channel, like I talked about for the media filled, have an open channel, but have a bunch of small square pots that are full of this this absorbent material say coconut coir you know peat moss whatever it might be that can wick the water up so if you think about it it's basically a long channel with water running down the bottom again nft style with all these little pots lined up in it and this is we're going to sound very familiar because there's actually a system of self-watering container a container guarding called wicking buckets where people take five gallon buckets they cut a hole in the bottom, put a net cup full of some kind of material, wicking material, and have all those net cups, the bottom of these buckets, sit in a long, a long gutter that's full, automatically refills with water. So that's actually a system that's already out there. This is just sort of kind of working with that same idea, but built into a long NFT channel, essentially. So the nice thing about this is each one of those pots could be filled with enough material that I could probably grow a lot of things in there. And if I use kind of long pots instead of just perfectly square ones, so picture like a window box that I set in one of these channels, I could probably even grow potatoes in that. So that might be a way to turn an NFT system into a partial wicking system. It's kind of like a hybrid system. So I could grow a lot of things, but it would still fit. It would still fit into the dynamics, the shape, and the function of my NFT system. Because I'm pretty, pretty much sold on NFT. I do like NFT, but I may have to veer a little bit into media beds or some kind of substrate to grow a wider variety of crops. Because it's kind of my obsession, it's kind of my goal to make the most efficient and clean and simple aquaponic system or hydroponic system possible. So that's my goal. Again, this, this is all introduction. I'm gonna start these experiments. Um, I'm gonna bring them from diagram, from picture to reality. I'm gonna start making the tubes. I'm gonna set up some channels that are media filled and have the pots in it. And I'm gonna do this all in my aquaponic system out in the greenhouse. Now it's winter, I don't get a lot of sunlight. I don't have supplemental light. So everything will be going kind of slowly. But, you know, that's okay, because we'll see how it goes. And maybe by the end of this winter, I will have a good solution, and then I can just go crazy when spring actually comes around and I can get some serious growing done. So anyway, I hope you like this video. A lot of information, but I think it's really important. I'm super duper excited about this. I hope you are too. So definitely be sure, if you're not already, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on all these extra crazy experiments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on this journey.